Kayla Trainer, welcome. <laughs> Coach Trainer, that's pretty cool. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm really excited. We can hear it in your voice too. I mean, the <laughs> excitement and I'm sure the whirlwind is catching up to you as well, right? Maybe you could take us through these past couple of weeks. Congratulations also in order for a, a Boston College National Championship and I'm sure it's been pretty wild since then. Yeah, it's certainly been a whirlwind. Um, you know, coming off a national championship with Boston College was just amazing experience. And then, you know, right away it turned into U.S. tryouts. And then, um, so it was training for that. Um, and then interviewing here. And then, you know, now just getting the job. It's just been a crazy couple of weeks. But um, I'm really excited and I'm really looking forward to the future. As you get your feet on the ground relative to the job, what are the most important things for you to start to embrace and work on? Yeah, I think right away where I'm picking off is uh, picking up is just recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, recruiting is a huge part of Syracuse Lacrosse and wanting to get the best players in the country here. So um, to start, I don't want to miss out on any recruiting opportunity. So. You know, I've gotten going with that, um, getting my staff together. And, you know, over the next couple of weeks, it's just going to be about getting to know the players and getting to know the people here at the university and within the lacrosse staff. So just really getting to know people and getting my feet on the ground and getting ready to go so we have an awesome fall. You talked to the team last night in a virtual way. Uh, that's how it's got to be done, uh, certainly during a pandemic, but especially in the, in the old off season now. Uh, as it were, what did you try to get accomplished with that? Well, there was a lot of rumors going around and I'm sure there were so many unknowns for all the girls. So I just wanted to say hello and introduce myself and see their faces. Um, and I shared just a little bit of my vision and really, again, it was just an introduction. And I told them that, you know, I'll be reaching out to them soon and we're gonna be developing a relationship over the summer. Um, but the meeting was just a hello and see their faces and introduce myself. What is your vision, Kayla? I, I, I know you're only 27 years old. Mm -hmm. So if you've been dreaming of being a head coach, it, it hasn't been for long. This is <laughs> happening pretty quickly for you. Your playing credentials are obviously incredible uh, as a four-time All-American. But coaching's a different animal. So you, you've had that message stored up. Is it something you're figuring out as you go mm -hmm. along? What is it that you want to impart to your team? Well, I've known I've wanted to coach really my whole life. I'm a coach's kid. My father is a basketball coach and he's co he coached high school for a long time and now he coaches college at Union. Um, so I grew up knowing I wanted to coach. It was a part of my decision in picking Syracuse was um, I wanted to play for somebody that I thought could help me become a head coach one day. Um, I certainly think I made the right decision. And, you know, so all four years of my college experience, I was, that was something that was on my mind. And then I've been really blessed with opportunities at Harvard and Boston College, uh, where I've been mentored really well and had great connections with the coaching staffs I've been on and also the players that I've coached. Um, and I think I have been really lucky to have a unique coaching experience that, you know, every year I coached at Boston College, I coached in a national championship game. and this past year winning a national championship. So although I'm young, I think I have a really unique experience in those years. And um, I think the timing's right. I feel really prepared and ready to lead this team. And I'm excited for our future. You grew up in the capital region. Syracuse is really all you've known, obviously until you went out into the professional world a little bit there at Harvard and in BC. How do you hold Syracuse you know, on a pedestal and getting this opportunity here relative to any other school? Yeah, this is just a dream come true. Something that you know I never thought in my wildest dreams could happen. Um, then when the opportunity came, I just had to go for it. And um, it was really exciting. And it's just, you know, like you said, growing up in Niskuna, a small town, and then uh, just having a lot of admiration for the program and for Gary and for, you know, everything this school's done. Um, I'm just thrilled to be back here and to be leading this team. Um, I think I was ready to be a head coach and I'm just really proud that it's here. So with Gary Gate and Lisa Miller, you've worked for both. You're succeeding them as only the third coach <laughs> in the, the history of the program, which is now uh, a quarter century old, about as old as you are. Uh, you, what is your relationship with Gary? And you talk about maybe learning the coaching ranks from him. 
Uh, his office is going to be in close proximity to yours. How do you see that transition going forward? Mm -hmm. Well, Gary's been just unbelievable to me in my whole life and given me so much opportunity that, again, I couldn't have imagined. Um, and he's really been a mentor and led me through a lot of my life and took a chance on me to come play here. Um, but the past couple of years, he's also been a peer of mine and I've gotten to coach against him. And um, that was also a really exciting uh, thing for me in my life was, you know, competing against Gary. But, um, you know, in general, I'm just really lucky that he's still here and that he's still in my life. And I still get to see him and have his influence um, still on me. So um, I'm proud to be here with him and taking over the program that he's done so much for. And I'm really excited. You're clearly well connected, not only to the program, but the game in general. When you do go about setting up your staff, how do you do it? Um, well, I'm really proud. I'm going to keep the staff that's here that's just done an amazing job and that just coached in a national championship. Um, I think they've done an unbelievable job with this team. So I'm looking forward to keeping them on staff. For you, you come in with these unique credentials. Obviously, you're a tremendous player. We're a tremendous player. You are a tremendous player, mm -hmm. right? So it's unusual to the game and, and a bit unique that you are still very much viable on the field yourself in mm -hmm. the professional ranks, the national team ranks. Mm -hmm. Give me the pros and cons of that if you can. I guess the con would be time management, <laughs> right? So how do you do it? And, uh, and what kind of leverage does that give you in the recruiting game? Mm -hmm. Well, it's exciting. I just have a passion for the game. I love this sport and I love competing as a coach. I love competing as a player. It's something that's certainly really hard to give up, um, you know, putting on a uniform and competing. And although, like you mentioned, time management will be the biggest challenge, um, why not? Why not? I think it's, you know, so cool and it's fun to compete and play on the international level still and in the professional league. and. I'm definitely going to give it a try and keep going for it. I know I am getting older, so we'll see how long I can go, but it's certainly something I want to go for. You, know, you said you introduced yourself to the team. Is there a sense, and I know you want to be modest about it, that you don't have to introduce mm -hmm. yourself to the team? Gary Gates not going to have to tell people who he is or was, and you don't mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. So that has to open doors uh, for you in recruiting. Do you sense that with your current team and, and with the recruits you're connecting with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well... You know, it's unique that somebody who played in this program and for that coach that they had all just played for is coming back. So we, I know we have a lot in, familiar with each other. And, um, you know, I one day I had their experience as well. So, um, yeah, it's certainly unique, but I'm proud. I think there is definitely a bond and a connection that we'll have that's unique. Um, not a lot of coaches get the opportunity to coach at their alma mater. So... Um, I'm proud that I get to do that. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's like Coach Beheim in a way. Uh, not only he and Coach Desco and Coach Kate and some of the others that have been at their alma mater, but starting at a young age, uh, doing it as you have. And the last thing for me would be your scouting report. You, again, a, a weapon for you to, is to come in, mm -hmm. not only knowing Syracuse because you'd follow it as an alum, but mm -hmm. shrewdly looking uh, across that midfield line and playing four times this year. You have to have a pretty good sense of, of what you're getting into. Yeah. Um, so I coach at Boston College in the ACC conference. Obviously, Syracuse is a part of that conference. So I've coached against them the past couple of years. Uh, and in particular, this year, we got to play Syracuse four times when I was at BC. So certainly, I really know this program from an outsider's perspective, coaching lens. Um, but I'm excited to be here. I think there's a lot of things that the program does really well. Um, one of the things I said to the team last night is that We've been really close, but the program's been really close for a long time. And I think we all share that we're sick of being close and that we want to get it done and we want to bring a national championship back to Syracuse. Well, you just did it at BC, not only winning the title, but two Tawaraton Award winners. Knowing that Syracuse is kind of right now where BC just has been, right? Banging mm -hmm. against that championship wall. What in your mind is going to be the difference to take it over the hump? Mm -hmm. Well, coming into a program that's had so much, so much success, it's not about rebuilding. It's about building upon the success that the program's had. So um, 
you know, certainly I think we need to make some changes because if we don't change little things, then we would just be coasting and once again, becoming close to our goal. But I think it's just small things that need to change in terms of little things on and off the field that hopefully will make the difference um, and that we'd be building upon the success and not just restarting, but making these little minor changes that will help um, overall with the program and the players. And, you know, hopefully that will we'll be able to get it done. Well, Kayla, it was uh, exciting to watch you as a player, uh, certainly dazzled on the field and, and rewrote the record books. Uh, great to have the K train arriving <laughs> back at home. Thank you so much.